And here's the video review for MP45 Masterpiece Bumble slash Bumblebee version 2.0 in his little chibi, uh, more cartoony car form. And it's different. They're, they're not having to like fully license uh, the, the like real world vehicle modes or like they're not striving for accuracy to real world vehicle modes. Uh, they did that with the original Bumble and you can or Bumblebee and kind of see how those compare. He's a little bit brighter yellow. Um, and again, more Penny Racer, cartoony styled Volkswagen uh, here on the version two. And then here he is with his G1 counterpart, just because. So a real quick vehicle size comparison there. And turning him around, like I do have, again, I have some, some minor issues with all the MPs I've been getting lately. Um, this back bumper you can see isn't sitting quite flush. You can see where it's supposed to... Uh, it's kind of getting caught on the edge here, but even when I push it all the way forward, like these should be sitting more flush with uh, the squared off pieces here, and then this should be more flush to cover the Autobot logo there. And it maybe I, if I hit it with a hair dryer or something, because there's nothing in here mistransformed that I can find, and it is tabbed on to the. There's a couple little tabs here uh, in in the bumper that uh, the bumper tabs onto. And it just doesn't sit super flush. Now, it's not the end of the world. It's it's not, like, so bad that you can't tell what it's supposed to be. But um, I've seen pictures of, of some people who have this sit just naturally flush. And I'm jealous because I feel like this should fit a little better. Maybe hitting it with a hairdryer and bending it a little bit will help. I don't know. But, yeah, so here he is. Little Bumble rolls around. Uh, his weapon stores right under here, which we can just pop right out. There's a couple little slots here in his waist or in his I guess his thighs that the slots on the gun can slide into. He does come with a little spike. Uh, it's the same spike as far as I can tell that comes with MP44 but you do get your own version of him with Bumblebee just in case you didn't buy MP44 you've got one to use here with Bumblebee. He does come with a little iHeart NYC bumper plate that you can tab onto the front bumpers if you want to have that, uh, as well as he does come with some various little stickers you can stick on him if you want. I have not wanted. Go ahead and pop that license plate back off. And like I said, Spike sits inside there. Uh, you, you, you can't just open the door and pop him in, though. Like, even though the door is its own piece, uh, you have to uh, kind of pop, untab it here and uh, from the sides of the hood and lift this piece up and pick him up. And now his leg pops off. It's the same same issue, like the little ball joints. It's clear plastic and then loose ball joints. He seems a little tighter overall than, uh, like, at least posing-wise than the one that came with my MP44, but he is still prone to, like, these little ball joints popping off uh, with just no warning or any real fanfare. But yeah, a little spike a bit inside him. He's got a couple little grooves for his heels. And it's just as well uh, because like the, the, that comes apart there because that is the first step of transforming. I'm getting this this tabbed in. I find it's easier to get one side uh, pegged in here, bring it down, peg it in, and then bring the other side up because it just gives you a little bit more leverage to as long as it stays together uh, to get the other side uh, lined up and pegged in properly. There we go. To lock him back together in car mode. Now he is painted yellow plastic, like even some of it's painted yellow, some of it's painted clear plastic. So anytime, whenever there's like a little even tiny scuff, it kind of starts to take on the like orange chip look to it. It has a kind of an orangish color, which is a little disappointing, but uh, yeah, a lot more paint than I would prefer to get chipped during the transformation process. Uh, mostly the worst one is right here on the side of the hood. But I uh, pop that open and then lift this up. And then go ahead and get the uh, bring these out to the side. Come around to the back and pull the whole bumper assembly down. And you can see here's these little kind of angled tabs right here that fit into slots on the bumper. Like they're the same shape. The bumper's tabbed onto that. I don't know why that's not folding all the way up. It's just something I'm going to have to work on. Because these pieces don't seem to be incorrectly installed on the hinge. The pins seem fine. I'm just not sure. But bring this down. Uh, bring... This whole uh, assembly here 
on the back, grab the wheels and kind of pull this whole thing up. Or not, I guess not the wheels, but just the back part here. Uh, make sure these inner pieces here on the hood stay down. Uh, lift this up, kind of unpeg the, uh, unpeg these. Push uh, this with this up. Push the, the what will become the arms and the chest plate down and out here, um, and then fold the wheels up just a little bit. And then you want to rotate this around at the waist. That will let you bring this piece more forward. Uh, you can bring the arms out to the side. Flip his head up. Uh, make sure it'll pop all the way up here. And once you've got the clearance there, you can kind of get the arms out of the way to fold the wheels into the body and then push the uh, the front of the wheel well right here. You can see that you kind of push that right up against the wheels to give it the clearance you need. Uh, and then you take this, fold this back piece in. And when you fold this in, it's going to go over these pin, over these hinges here. But you can see this angled piece right here. It's going to fit up against that slot. It's going to kind of, when you fold it up, it should fit right in there. So you want to be careful doing it so you don't scratch the paint, but you slide it right in there and then you can slide it down on the pins. No, nope, we missed it on this side, there you go. And when you get that, you'll, you'll, you can see how it's supposed to sit there all the way in like that. And then you can push the uh, chest plate back over that. This piece comes up like this. Uh, the, the front hood you pull out on this peg right here and then flip his little wheel cover down. You can see there's a little groove on it for where it sits on the ridge up here. But you take just this piece and rotate it up and around through that gap here. And again, uh, fold this down and around so that piece sits right on the, the hinge of, at least it should sit right there on the, uh, huh, I thought that worked, that worked better the other day. I managed to get that to sit right on where that cutout sits right on the lip of that, but whatever. And then this piece, you fold these two side pieces in like this, folds up like that and into the body. And then this piece just kind of folds up against the back here. This should sit, there we go. Oh, maybe like that, I don't know. But collapse it as much as you can. I've seen some people who've collapsed this a little further and I'm not sure, they said it, it was in a foreign language, but it said it doesn't require any modification. So there may be a way to get that to sit a little better uh, than just what I'm doing here, but you just kind of want to get that up against there. And it's got his little back wheel. Go ahead and bring his arms down. And then on the legs, come down here, open up this panel, which will allow you to bring the knee up. And then you can fold this upper panel down and peg it in, rotate it at the lower knee, and then this panel closes back up and hits this tab on the side of the leg. Like that. Same over here. Open this up, bring the knee up, bring the upper thigh down rotate it and then tab it together like that. The arms you can go ahead and you want to kind of grab it here because this is this whole assembly you can kind of see there's a hinge here and then a rotational pin up here and then a swivel here but there's a lot of really thin parts up here and this is a little has some resistance to it so you either want to take it like this and kind of push back while you fold it down to, to not put any pressure on some of these thinner parts or just grab it right here and uh, just make sure you're you're supporting that joint when you fold that down and around so you're not putting any uh, stress on some of the thinner pieces. Now, now, I haven't had any issues with anything even looking like it's stressing, but, you know, why, why risk it? Um, bring the shoulders around like that. And then the feet, you come down. Uh, you got to get... Come on. Fold it up like that. Uh, this piece right here on the wheel, uh, you want to kind of... Get that folded around, all the way around and in. Maybe this way. Oh, yeah, we go like this. Bring that into the foot. Yeah, fold that in. And then the, the, the door comes down, folds in. Uh, it collapses in. On the, You can see there's, a, there's two places where it collapses in. There's a hint, uh, kind of post here that slides in like that. And then on this little pin hinge collapses like that. And then you fold that up onto the back of the foot. So the foot, and you can bring that, the bumper down. And the foot kind of looks like that. It's not like a lot of things I've been seeing lately that look really kibbletastic in pictures. It's uh, it's not as bad in person. Like, it's still not ideal, but it's not uh, it's not quite as horrible in person. I don't know if maybe I'm just maybe getting it to fold up a little bit more than a lot of pictures had, 
or if it's just really just not as bad in person. Let's bring that down, open that. Hold that down and around like that. Collapse the door in, pull it up, pull it up. And there he is in his robot mode. And it is a little bit more tune accurate, um, at least from the front. Some kibble on the back, but again, not as bad as a lot of pictures made it look. Even from the side, like he does kind of have a chunky backpack, but it doesn't look horrible the way uh, some pictures did. And some of the early pictures, I think, may have been slightly mistransformed, but uh, whatever. So he's got a ball joint at the head, or he's got a double swivel at the head, but he can look all around here at, at his head joint. He's got, like I said, he's got the, the rotational joint right up here again where, where this whole assembly pegs into the hood. Uh, and then he's got a kind of ab or shoulder crunch there with this pin right here. He's got a swivel at this part. And then he does have the outward movement at the arms. But again, like that's tight enough that I'm a little concerned about it. Uh, then he has uh, dual hinge elbows as well as a bicep swivel. He does have wrist swivel and his fingers are all one piece and can open on each side. He should have waist swivel. Doesn't he have waist swivel? Oh, maybe he doesn't. Oh, because of the oh, because this is part of it. You have to bring this down to give him waist swivel. But if you want to, you can get that to swivel around. But it does tend to stay locked up there because of that piece. And then he's got separate hip panels that lift up, and then even in here, like the the, the gray leg is a separate hinge than the actual uh, waist armor here, so that can get out of the way when you're moving around. Although some for some reason, mine every now and then hits a springy resistance that I I do not understand why it's doing that, it wants to kind of spring backwards because it's just a circular peg in there and there's no catches or anything. I don't I don't know why it does that. Um, it's easily overcomable, but uh, not the big deal. But in and out thighs, uh, thigh swivel, uh, pretty decent knees, although it does show off his hollow leg uh, when, you, when you bend it too far. Uh, and then ankle tilts and uh, front to back and then in and out ankles. So he's pretty solid and poseable in robot mode. Here he is uh, as a quick size comparison with Spike. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to hold him up just to give you an idea. Because he does not stand very well. He does have his weapon, which is a little difficult to get into his hand. Um, his hand doesn't close all the way, and because of the small fingers and the shape of the gun, you gotta kind of wiggle it in and then squeeze it. But he does have his gun. His gun also comes with a little blaster attachment, so you can attach this uh, to the tip of the gun so it looks like he's sh shooting a laser beam. Pew, pew. And then he comes with alternate faces that kind of lift this up. Just pop his face out like that. So he's got his standard face. He's got a happier face. I'm kind of surprised they didn't give him the, the toy visor like they did with the original one. So there's like a happy face. And then he's got a kind of, ooh, or concerned face, I guess is what he's making here. I'm not 100% sure. They're kind of like... He's making a face. I'm not sure if that's just supposed to be a talking face or what. Now, I liked the original uh, MP Bumblebee. I thought it was a pretty decent job. And then this one showed up, and I'm like, okay, that does, fair enough, that does look more like the cartoon. Here they are uh, side by side. And again, if you'll remember, he looked like a much larger vehicle. Uh, it's just he has a lot of stuff that collapses more than... Than this one does. This one still has like that. that it's got big feet. Um, I still like this bumblebee. It's still a fun bumblebee toy. Um, but I may throw the uh, the toy visor on him and just have him as a different character on my shelf. I don't think I like this one, the new one, more than I thought I would. I, I really love his cartoony car mode. Um, I wish the bumper sat a little better. But like, okay, I get it. If you're gonna start doing now that they're kind of going for more cartoon accurate looking vehicles and robots like they've done with the last few releases, um, this Bumblebee does fit in a little better. Here he is with his G1 self, who 
has a loose leg and doesn't always want to stand. Get these guys back a little bit. Uh, here he is, just for fun, here he is with his MP movie bumblebee with the, the painted visor I did for him. And then, uh, of course, since we're talking about cartoon animation and all that good stuff, here he is with MP44, whose gun is now rotated off to the side. There we go. So he looks good with MP44. Like I said, he really fits in with, with the new tune looking robots they're doing. Um, it's just... And, and, and I get that, and I get that they want to have their iconic characters in those, if they're going to do a whole new design uh, look. I get why they're doing it, but um, I was really kind of hoping the Masterpiece line would continue to give us more new characters. Now, they did announce the uh, that apparently they're doing a Masterpiece Combiner Raiden in Japan, or the Train Combiner, which... Uh, Looking forward to, and it, really, that's probably one of the easiest ones for them to start off with because the trains uh, were the, the trains involved in that are fairly blocky trains anyway, so like it's probably a little less engineering. Now, again, it's the masterpiece line, so maybe they're going to be exquisitely detailed uh, on top of that, and I would expect them to be. But um, I feel like maybe one, Japan likes trains, and two, just the it seems like it's going to be a little easier to give them the three modes since they were already kind of blocky anyway and the combined mode was already kind of blocky, but we'll see. Anyway, there's MP45 uh, Bumble version 2, our cartoon-accurate Bumblebee. Also, real quick, I forgot to show it off, but his gun does have a little peg here on the side that can peg on... You can store his gun in robot mode right here on the back of his waist if you want. All right, just FYI, goodbye.